After yesterday evening's activity, it was time to leave the other tasks and join in the Nampana session, which is a common monastic routine. All 12 novices assisted Praajan and prepared Nampana by themselves. This was time away from their studies in which the novices and Praajan could become more familiar with each other. In the evening's lesson, Praajan taught the novices Katawatu Sutta, or the subject of discussion. Katawatu Sutta are the proper topics of conversations for monks to eliminate desires and achieve enlightenment. Okay, first, talking about wanting little. Talking about how can we have minimum. Okay, you know, the Buddha, when the monk ordained, the Buddha said, we should be happy just having little, okay? Like uh, the, what they call the minimum requirement, okay? We we be very happy to have a, the root of the tree as our place to stay. When you have the, the berry can, your rope, you have to take a good care of it. Actually, as, as a monk, we, we have to learn even how to sow it, how to dye. So it's, it takes a lot of care. During this time, some novices had questions, which Praajan helped to explain. Furthermore, Praajan gave examples from some parts of Katawatu Sutta that relate to the novices' daily lives. The reverence means to be free, freedom. You liberate from the from the from the suffering. Maybe DJ can be the reverence or free from his. Addition to game. No, no, right? or, or he can be I our maid. Game too much. Or he can be our, our maid and clean every room for us for free. So you can talk about that. The fact that you're free from something that you know like you no longer do that. Uh, you no longer add, addict to that. You know? So that's called deliverance or freedom. While learning the proper topics for conversations. Pra Ajahn led the group to discuss the topic of eliminating desires. Okay, the word Buddha, okay, first the word Buddha, what's the meaning of the word Buddha? Um, Buddha is a person. It's a person? A special person. A per special person? In, in what way? Why, why did he special? Um, because he got enlightened. Because he got enlightened, that's right. What kind of enlightened? What did he know that other people don't know? Uh, meditation. Oh, he knows meditation? Anything else? He knows his past life? He knows everything. This is called Katha Vattu. The first one is called Apicca Katha. Apicca. The second one is Santutti. Santutti Katha. The third one is Viveka Katha. The fourth one is Non-Sangsakha. Non Asangsakha Katha. The fifth one is the Viriya Katha. Sixth one is Sila Katha, Samasi Katha, Panya Katha, Vimutti Katha, Vimutti Yana Katha. The conversations among them led to the Buddha's teaching, which is the Four Noble Truths, or the way to the cessation of suffering. What the meaning of the Buddha? He know four things. Okay, first he know suffering. 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 Okay, second cause, cause, cause of suffering. Cause of suffering. Okay. And, way to suffer. and third one suffering. is the end of suffering. Of suffering. And the fourth suffer. one is path, the path suffer. towards the end of suffering.
After the class, the novices cleaned the temple pavilion and swept the surrounding area. This social work was a change from the novices to doing meditation or chanting to exercise and relax. This evening was more special than usual, as it was the eighth day of the waning moon, known as Wan Pra, or a Buddhist observance day. Although the people of Det Udom and nearby Buddhists usually gather for the evening chant, sila, and sermon from Luang Ta Ane, this was the first time the novices got to do the evening chant at Dhamma Grove. Sama Samputo Bhagawa Putang Bhagawantang Abhiwate The Buddhist holy day is observed four days a month to allow Buddhists to practice the Buddhist teaching and to allow the Dhamma to ease their sufferings. Buddha Pikitim chanting, or verses in praise of the Buddha, also remind the monks of their duty to spread the Buddha's teaching. After the evening chant, Luang Ta Ane came to meet the novices and Buddhists at the Dhamma Hall. The novices recited the ten precepts to Luang Ta Ane. Some novices could not recite the precepts accurately, so Luang Ta Ane encouraged them to practice harder. So did you see the importance of these ten rules? Uh, don't do, uh, don't uh, hate it or don't lose your heart. Uh, all these rules, we should be proud that we have the chance to to take on the training rules that is laid out by the Lord Buddha and to um, able to internalize this quality, this virtue, this moral code into yourself. Although two weeks have passed, these 12 novices still have a lot more to practice for their own benefit in the long run. Luang Ta Ane stated that the value of knowledge which the novices gain during the ordination will be useful for them in the future, even after they leave the monkhood.
The fifth day of the monastic routine began before dawn as usual. Being an early bird is the monastic routine of what Nong Ba Pong. This is a skillful means to eliminate tinamita, which means impassivity and drowsiness that will periodically disturb the meditation. So Pra Ajahn had the novices learn to be early risers, a routine that monks should follow. ธรรมยังรัตนทายพนามกถายโยเชวสังเวกภริติปัตตนัตปัทฌานพนามาเสวุโทสุสุโทกรุณามานะโวโยจันตสุธาภารัญญานะโลจโนโลกาสภาโพ
มณีอุจาสยนะมหาสยนาเวรมณีสัตตารูปารัชตาปฏิกหานาเวรมณีอนุญาสิโคภคว่าทาสาหิอังเกหิสามนาสัมมาเรนังสมนอวิสิสทรายทอมเมมอริสเดอะเทนพรีเซ็ตส์บัตเธอคิดนอตแมนจ์อิตยัดสุพระอาจารย์เกิดเธอสมัครไว้สและช่วยเหลือเธอแล้วก็ช่วยเหลือ Then พระอาจารย์ had the novices practice meditation in the proper posture and manner with new methods. This is the training for you to be mindful. Otherwise, you will not be mindful. You will not know that your position is not straight. What happened? Ati, sit up straight. Look up straight. Hold. Keep your your lotus. Hold it. Ah, do anjali. Pra Ajahn explained to the novices the reasons why they were using this method. It's like a lotus. Okay, we are the lotus is born in the mud, but it's go above the water. We try to let go of the old habit. Now we have to change the habit of uh, running around, shouting. Yesterday, many people banging the door, shouting, running. That's not appropriate for the novice. Okay, the novice means the one, the one who are quiet, who are peaceful. Yesterday we asked the n i s a y a from Long t a n e k We changed to a new person, we, like a lotus flower. Before having breakfast, Pra Ajahn asked the novices to sit calmly and reflect on their actions. You, as a novice, you are, you are an example of for these people. So if you walk or you do anything without mindfulness, people will not respect you. Revise what you've done today. You could drop any bullet. How many times you put your ball on the floor without being on the stands? Promise to yourself that today you're going to be, you're going to turn to be new, new, new novice. Whatever you behaved badly yesterday, we apologize to ourselves. After the novices started to calm down, Pra Ajahn asked them what they did wrong this morning, and noted how each novice made mistakes in different ways. Please forgive me. I will be mindful. I will not drop my ball lid again. Okay. All right. Good. So, about three times. And then I will not drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will not drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. I won't drop my bowling again. I will be mindful. Buddha Dharma Sangha. Buddha Dharma Sangha. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I will. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. What are you doing? What did you do? Like I made a noise. Like I will be more careful with my bow. I will be more careful with my bow. In the second week of learning the rules of the monastic way. The novices became more refined and admirable monks, according to the Buddha's teaching.
After the meal, the novices began cleaning their requisites. Apart from cleaning, the processes of wiping, rubbing, and drying the requisites were also taught constantly by Pra Ajahn. There are other requisites that the novices must take good care of. For example, the shoulder strap, the bowl stand, and the alms bowl container. The novices must not let these things be damaged, as it might cause problems during the alms round. During this time, Kao Ban, a former novice from True Little Monk Thailand Year 7, visited Pra Ajahn and gave encouragement to the international novices. <laughs> While taking care of the requisites, Pra Ajahn reminded the novices to do their monastic tasks properly. So the floor will, wet, will be wet and when we walk on, it can be like dirty our feet and then when we return to the sala. So it can, can be dirty to the sala also. So the right position that you should put your water is that direction, right? Okay. So next time we're gonna pour water to the to different direction. Are you okay to go back clean? Okay, go go. Apart from cleaning the requisites, the little novices and Pra Ajahn also got the chance to have conversations and became more intimate during this time. Wait, there's a big one and a small one. Big one to one, small one to small. That's the big one. Okay, let's go. Before continuing their walk from yesterday to study nature, Pra Ajahn gave the novices a brief guideline for their further studies. Anybody know what Owada means? Owada. Owad, what is Owad mean? Sin? Sila is first. Which one is Sila? First one. Okay, the first one not to do evil is Sila. Okay, who is the Sila group? Of me. Okay, so you know the meaning of your group, huh? Okay, and then who's the Mahdi group? Which number is that? What the what the wood? No, the Samadhi is the second one to do good, cultivate good. Yeah. The Samadhi is the highest good. And who is the wisdom? Who is the Panya? Which number is that? Three. Number three. <laughs> purify the mind. That you need the wisdom to purify the mind. Morality, concentration, and wisdom are the core of Buddhism, which are called the threefold training, or the training in higher morality, mentality, and wisdom. Then Pra Ajahn reminded the novices to be mindful in every step before they began their walk. Oh, okay. Well, it's a two-way. Oh, you can do today. either yeah, you can do foot toe, right foot, uh, right foot, left toe, or you can do may I be well, may I be wise, may I be free. Yeah, remember? Okay. So when you walk and then listen to Ajahn Swang. Don't talk to each other. Once their minds were focused, the novices could contemplate their natural surroundings more clearly, which led them to come up with questions for Pra Ajahn. He used the medicine that he could only yeah, eat afternoon. Be afternoon okay. is okay. Did you wrote in this one? Yes, I wrote everything. That one, all of it. You know meaning? Oh, like sacrifices, like. So you want to do something for Dhamma, for example, like donate something to someone, you are far from Dhamma because we're not making sacrifices. Or reflect something. Yeah. From this lesson, the novices learn the relationship between nature and human beings. 
For example, nature provides medicinal herbs and mental tranquility for people in the big city, which some novices might be familiar with. Afterwards, the novices gathered outside the study hall to continue their lesson on how to make handmade natural toothbrushes. Do you know there's two things that you don't need to offer to the monk? Water. No. Water, that's right. Okay, first thing is water. What it is? Toothbrush. Yeah, you don't need to offer. Yeah, the monk can use it. Yeah. Water and toothbrush, you can use it. Okay, so it's in, in the Vinaya rule. So just two things that when you are a monk, so you learn more. But you are novice now, it's easy. But make sure that you not take anything that people not given to you. Pra Ajahn divided the steps in making the toothbrushes into four, which were to break, to cut, to sharpen, and to comb. Yeah, if you don't do properly, it just cracks. Yeah, so that's the crack what I is not to good. do. Crack and break. Because you need a, uh, this for anything quite a bit long to fill this in here. So Whoa. You have to be very patient and uh, mindful that you're heating. And you know that you're heating. You, can, you have to feel the heat that you're heating. And the hammer that, that touching the wood. Pra Ajahn finished the potentially dangerous steps himself and kept a close eye on the novices during the process. An important material for making a handmade toothbrush is gota bark, which can ease a toothache. This nature-dependent life is a very good example for the novices learning. Apart from making toothbrushes for Pra Ajahn, the novices also practiced mindfulness and concentration during this activity. Not, not in the middle, at the side. Patiently, gently, not and too hard. turning to white. And you just hit the same place. And you just keep on rolling, uh, twisting. See? Ah. The novices adapted many techniques from Pra Ajahn to make their toothbrushes more presentable. Before the session ended, Pra Ajahn inspected the toothbrushes from each novice and gave them advice. This one? Ah, too short, right. Yeah, you have to pound it more like this. This one is too short. And you can't do it now because it's too, yeah, you, when you get it out, then... Pra Ajahn had the novices put the handmade toothbrushes into bags with their names on them to observe their improvement in the following days. Okay, so this is the first, the first one, maybe power will come out like this, okay? And then we cut, maybe it come out like this. Huh? And then we, we we chopping it, and then sand, sand, wood it, and then, you know, we get it really nice like this, in order, or this one in order. Okay. So this is the five, five, five pala. You know what the five pala is? Toothbrush. No, it's called. It's the symbol of the Dhamma, the Sata Virya Sati Samadhi Panya. Five. Finally, Pra Ajahn explained to the novices about the Kornisai ceremony with Luang Ta Ane by putting the toothbrushes and lotuses on trays to pay respect and asked to be his disciples. As the morning lesson ended, not only did the novices learn from the practical activities, but they were also taught the Dhamma and Buddha's sermons. The most crucial thing is to have mindfulness when doing everything. As Ajahn Cha Supato from Wat Nong Pa Pong has stated, the ones with mindfulness would receive the Dharma from Buddha all the time.
The afternoon lesson started under the cooling shade of the trees. The weekend is drawing closer, and the novices continue to further their study to shape their minds. This afternoon's learning process was about the nearly zero waste lifestyle by the sustainable self, with Madeline Rieknagel as the instructor to share this lifestyle with the novices. Jack and Hunter also participated in the activity as usual. Madeline began the activity by having the novices observe plants which were similar to ones she had at the balcony of her residence in Bangkok. Then she asked the novices how to live a nearly zero waste lifestyle. Could you actually imagine a life without waste? Possible. It's possible, okay. It might be possible. It's what did you say, DJ? Novice DJ? Possible. It might be possible. It might be possible, okay. What do you think is the biggest challenge? Uh, not to use too much and how to know how to manage our waste. Okay. Do you, I don't know if you remember from the recent sessions, uh, we talked about living with more or less. How do you find actually the middle path? She then asked the novices to think about waste that could potentially be made into compost. The novices spent some time thinking and shared more techniques to turn waste into compost. And what do you have to do before you put it into the compost? Is See, this is easy to break, but if it's full of egg yolk, you do this. It takes like 10 minutes to make this into compost. Some of the novices mentioned earlier is also the issue of smell. So you just make sure you balance. I mean, it's like understanding nature. Nature knows how to balance itself out. The it's the same with the compost. Activity. Like you smell it and you know it's something is maybe, maybe it's too wet or there's too much food on top. You, so you just add whatever you have available. You add soil, you add leaves, you add newspaper. Keep mixing it and you will understand over time it's actually so easy and so much fun. And that's one of the reasons why I want to separate food waste from the other waste. Harmful gases, you're reducing what goes to the landfill um, and you're actually creating something that's really important because you're also returning good soil to the planet. Afterward, Madeline explained the near-zero waste lifestyle which was related to the philosophy of sufficiency economy. In the beginning, when, uh, when I started really focus on how is it to live waste-free, is it possible in an apartment? You know, many people actually think, well, it's not possible because where do you actually grow food? Where do you compost? Mm -hmm. And so my compost bins, I have one here on the balcony and two on the build, bigger balcony together with what you see back here. So I use the compost actually in part of the process to also grow my own food mm. and for plants for the uh, to clean the air pollution or to clean the air. You know, in, living in Thailand, I've, when I traveled, I've learned so much of uh, the sufficiency economy yeah. uh, philosophy from King Bumibol. Uh, and I think as more people move into the city, we need to actually adopt what works in agricultural environments mm. into an urban environment because more and more people live in an urban environment. So how can we motivate people to actually do the same thing at home? But, but there are many challenges because people think mm -hmm. it's time. Sure. I don't have time and it's actually really easy. The problem of waste management is a global issue that many countries are concerned about. This leads to methods in reducing garbage from the original sources, 
until it turns into zero waste. Living a nearly zero waste lifestyle as Madeline is doing is considered one of the solutions to the problem. Living a sustainable life is not only about reducing waste, but also to gradually change our way of life, which can be reflected in the materials we choose to use. Madeline showed the novices the appliances she uses in her daily life and shared the principles of living with the sustainable self. Okay, so take a second and look at it and pass it around. You can use like the... It's a, it's a bamboo toothbrush. Our mm -hmm. one's still better, we got a toothpick on the end. I know, I have to say I was actually really jealous yesterday when I saw you have actually two in one. <laughs> You know, when, when you go to a regular food market, how many plastic bags do you get just for one meal? Four, many? Four or five, right? So it's actually much easier for me to take the Pinto to the market and bring my food home that way. So every day before I leave, it's really about being mindful. Mm. Before I leave the house is what steps do I take throughout the day so I don't create any waste. What do you think? What else is this? Pencil. It's not a pencil? Look, it has a hole inside. Can I see closely, please? Uh, yes. Is it I have a straw? It's a straw. So it's different kind of straws that instead of using, what kind of straws can we avoid? Plastic. Plastic. And what can you do with it once you finish using it? Put it in the Back into the compost. Lastly, Madeline advised the novices to change their lifestyles to be more environmentally friendly. It's definitely not easy. I mean, they have a great experience right now, mm -hmm. but you know, where, wherever they go back to, we're mm -hmm. constantly surrounded by messages of consumption is important to be happy. Mm -hmm. So how do you actually stay away from uh, those messages? And mm -hmm. for me, uh, when I learned mindfulness, I learned that moving to Thailand. Mindfulness is a is a practice, it's like uh, a muscle. The more you practice, the better you get. Mm -hmm. So it, it really takes, it's, it's not about changing everything in one day. Yeah. It's really keeping the mindfulness and always returning to yourself. The novices wrote about lifestyles which were similar to Madeline's and shared their stories with their friends. Each of them had different ideas due to their difference in age. The first thing I'm going to do when I have spare time. Excellent. Spare time. Mm -hmm. And after that, I'm going to grow more vegetables uh, that I eat so um, I don't have to buy them. Yeah. So it makes the cycle flow more easily. So even things like this, right? Basil, maybe herbs and spices that we yeah. use? Especially in Thai cuisine. Yes. And uh, then I'm going to buy good earthworms to uh, make the process more quick. And then I'm going to reduce plastic by uh, using no plastic bags and using bamboo straws. Fantastic. Wow, fantastic. When I go back home, I won't really use plastic bags. And plastic I bags? Yeah, and I won't really watch TV that much and go outside and start doing things outside. Okay. Do you think you can do it? Where would you put the bag? In your pocket. In your pocket, your okay. Pocket. How many Excellent. times can we use a plastic bag? They don't have to be used just once, do they? No. No, they can be reused. Like 10 times or something. Maybe even 100. Yes. But if, but if you put something sharp in there, be careful. This is a fantastic oh. idea, I yeah. think. Yes. No, okay. excellent. The lesson of how to live a simple life and be environmentally friendly that the novices learn today is similar to the monk's way of life, which is to eliminate desires 
and refine oneself with the Dhamma. Please follow the summary of daily routines tomorrow at 9 o'clock p.m. Follow us worldwide through the streaming on www.truelittlemonk.com or Facebook, True Little Monk. The dual language broadcast is available on True Vision channels 60 and 99 and True Vision HD channels 119 and 333 and True Blue Panya channel. The dual language live broadcast is accessible 24 hours on True ID and True Blupanya applications. We would like to invite all Buddhists to an alms offering of dried food for True Little Monk, a wisdom training program for novices, at 6 o'clock a.m. at Wat Pa Sangam, Date Udom, Ubon Rachatani, 